What up, tubers? Yeah, it's your pal Jack Hammer Mike with another lame video. Um, the video I just did on the uh, Virginia gun grab, gun control, um, it's got a lot of hits to it. Um, a lot of interest in it. And I my talking points here going because I can't do all of this without my points. I got just a buttload here for you. Um, a couple things I'd like you guys to do for me, but, uh, we'll get to that in a minute here. Um, you know, I have, I don't think I've ever seen as much, um, interest or involvement with people or scuttlebutt, whatever you want to call it, rumors and all kinds of other nonsense on a gun control issue in some state that quite honestly, it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with me. Um, I don't think Arizona necessarily, yeah, it probably will, but eventually someday, but 
Right now, Arizona is probably the most firearms friendly state in the union. Um, very much uh, aware of the gun owners um, of the state and uh, totally respects that aspect of it. So, you know, I have nothing to fear right now. However, like I mentioned before, I got people coming from California, people coming from Washington State, people coming from Oregon that are tired of the rain all the time and the d dismal, gloomy skies. And the cost of living out here is a lot better than it is certainly in California, probably Oregon and Washington State. Um, yeah, they're spreading like a freaking plague. Um, hopefully they will not bring their liberal ways and trash the state like they've trashed theirs. You move to an area and you multiply and multiply until every natural resource is consumed. And the only way you can survive is to spread to another area. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. <coughs> Time will tell. But as it is right now, we uh, are a very gun-friendly, the gun-friendliest state in the Union, probably. Um, I, wish, I wish we would pass some sort of a uh, Hearing Protection Act in this state so that we could have sound, uh, suppressors. Um, that's something that just goes up my ass a mile that, you know, it's so much more dangerous because you, you've got a silencer. Well, it's not a silencer. It's a noise suppressor. I don't want to get off on, I got enough of a rant here. I don't need to fill my plate with a bunch of other stuff. So let's get right down to it. What tripped me on this was one, um, the, the amount of, uh, traffic that have gotten, uh, you know, and views and all. And I appreciate all you guys' comments. Please comment more if you want to. Um, but yeah, this was a pretty good, pretty good video from you guys. Uh, liked it a lot. Uh, picked up a couple of subs. Maybe after this, you guys see this part, you know, I'll get some more subs because we're going to need to do a few things once I get done ranting. Um, but what I did was I saw a um, article by Walter Williams about the Virginia deal. And if you guys go back a ways to and you're fans of the Rush Limbaugh show, um, Walter E. Williams, <laughs> I love that name, uh, is a professor of economics at George Mason University. Um, I don't know why he doesn't do it anymore, but um, there was a time where he would fill in for Rush. He was a guest host um, for Rush, and uh, the guy was fantastic. Now, it's not because um, he's black that he no longer is on um, as a substitute. Um, I, I have no idea. I've never heard of re any reasons why, but um, he was a smart guy. He is a very smart man. So... He wrote a little article for Fox News, and they're gonna be, oh, hey, Fox News, you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe. We have to get rid of you. We have to silence you. Oh, here's something. You wanna you wanna watch that funny clip again? I'm gonna put that clip back in here because I wanted to comment on what this asshole was saying before they got hit by the truck. <laughs> you saw that flag, right? With the cross on it? That's a known white supremacist symbol. It so is. them going around, pushing their Christianity on people who aren't even necessarily Christian, their obsession with their holiday, their obsession with freedom of speech marks that they wanna hurt people. After capitalism in its late stages as it is right now, we will move down to a one-class system called communism. Democratic and anarchist communism will be the ideology of the future. I'm right over here. You can come and get me if you want. <laughs>
um, was ranting on about the religion, uh, religious right or whatever they were ranting on um, about their um, obsession with religion and their obsession. I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but their obsession with freedom of speech. I'm like, what the hell? An obsession with freedom of speech? Um, yeah, we ought to all be obsessed with freedom of speech. We should not have one iota of any sort of censorship or limiting of what people can say, think, you know, get together and gather and uh, do their own thing. We should, there's no way we should be limiting that. I don't care if you disagree with it or not. Um, you know, yeah, the Nazi party, they suck. But should we limit them? Nope. Can't. If free play everywhere. You know, yeah, Antifa clowns, they would love to silence us on the right. Conservatives, they would love to shut us down. Uh, organizations like uh, GOA, USCCA, NRA, um, any gun group, pick them. Uh, they would love to shut that down. You know, Diane Feinstein and all her idiots in San Francisco have uh, labeled the NRA as a, you know, a, a domestic terrorist group. Seriously? <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, but I want to read this to you. I want to butcher all of this because reading some of this stuff, the Walter E. Williams is good, but um, I've got a couple of things from the Federalist Papers here. But I mean, this is a good article. Um, there's a link here down below, so you can get the you can get it for yourself. Read it. And uh, what I would like you guys to do with this is to share it. Um, I've got a flyer here. This is a flyer. They sent me the flyer, but I doctored it a little bit by putting uh, Governor Northam's uh, phone number to his office down here on the bottom. Um, I'm in Arizona, so this really isn't going to, uh, I'm not going to be able to help them much. But again, I joined them, so I'm a member. And I got the governor's phone number, so I'm going to be calling him and being a royal pain in the ass. Um, I'll get to this in a minute. Um, here we go. Walter Williams. Gun rights endangered in Virginia. Um, Virginia Democrat Governor, Democratic Governor Ralph Northam will have much to apologize for if he signs into law a bill that attacks Virginia citizens' Second Amendment rights. All right. uh, the measure is Senate Bill 16. Uh, Walter left out 18. And what was the other one? It was uh, 64. And another one that, that is going to like nail the sheriffs. And I saw something today earlier about uh, Virginia increasing the uh, uh, budget for um, the prisons because <laughs> they're going to have more people in prison. Uh, I, I'd have to verify that, so don't you know? Don't quote me on that, okay? Uh, so the measure is Senate Bill 16, which would ban assault firearms and certain firearm magazines. Since Democrats have seized control of Virginia's General Assembly in the last election, they are likely to push hard for strict gun control laws. Those laws will have zero impact on Virginia's criminals. And that's a good point right there. Let's stop. That's a great point because if these clowns were serious about protecting the citizens and your safety and your common sense gun laws and common sense gun safety, don't you think it would be safe to disarm criminals first and get the guns out of the hands of the uh, uh, the, the, the criminal element. <laughs> okay? Uh, um, that's, to me, is the, it just, it doesn't make sense to go and take away firearms from law-abiding citizens who obey the law and don't want to be class 6 felon because of this nonsense. Um... This is bullshit. So why do they do that? Uh, gonna push, those laws will have zero impact on Virginia's criminals and a heavy impact on Virginia's law-abiding citizens who own or intend to own semi-automatic weapons for hunting or their protection. As a friend once explained to me, I carry a gun because I can't carry a cop. That's <laughs> great. That's a great line. I'm going to try to steal that. Um, I'm proud of my fellow, fellow Virginians. Apparently, Walter lives in Virginia. I'm proud of my fellow Virginians' response to the attack on the Second Amendment rights. Firearms owners in the state have joined with sheriffs to form Second Amendment uh, sanctuaries. Um, 
86 counties, over 90%. Uh, however, oh, wait, yeah, I'm going to read this because uh, I want you guys to uh, support this guy. Um, Page County Sheriff Chad Cubbage said, Be it known that, that the Page Sheriff hereby declares Page County, Virginia as a Second Amendment sanctuary, and that the Page County Sheriff hereby declares its intent to oppose any infringement on the right of law-abiding citizens to keep and bear arms. Uh, oh, Cul Culpeper County. Uh, Sheriff John, uh, Scott Jenkins made a vow uh, during a uh, Board of Supervisors meeting where the Board of Supervisors unanimously agreed to declare the county Second Amendment constitutional county to protect, to, to properly screen, uh, he, he promises to properly screen and deputize. He's the guy that was going to deputize all the citizens. Thousands of our law-abiding citizens to protect the constitutional right to own firearms. So, Culpeper County, um, Sheriff Scott Jenkins, um, if you look him up and you can make a phone call and support him, uh, that would be way cool. Um, what's the last part of this? Um, in an attempt to appease citizens, here's Northern, the worm, um, trying to weasel out of, of all their shit, but they still are just, they're just covered in it, you know, they're just covered in bullshit. Uh, in an attempt to appease citizen resistance, because apparently you know, this is getting a lot of traction, you know, they're starting to look at it and say, hmm, this is not cool. <clears throat> the pesky citizens are making too much of a fuss. So, um, let's see, in an attempt to appease citizen resistance, Northam suggested that there would be a ban only on only the sales of semi-automatic rifles. He would allow gun owners, thank you, you're awful nice, he would allow gun owners to keep their current AR-15s and similar rifles as long as they are registered. <laughs> uh, otherwise, they must surrender the rifles. Uh, Walter E. Williams goes on to say, I'd urge Virginians not to fall for the registration trick. Knowing who owns what weapons is the first step to confiscation. We all know that. Some Democratic lawmakers on Capitol Hill say that local police who do not enforce gun control laws should face prosecution and even threats of the use of the National Guard. Virginia must heed the words and capture the spirit of their two most distinguished citizens, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, who wrote the Kentucky and Virginia Resolutions. These resolutions refer to the federal government but are just as applicable to state governments in principle. They said, quote, resolved that the several states comprising the United States of America are not united on the principle of unlimited submission to their general government. And whensoever the general government assumes undelegated powers, its acts are, its acts are unauthoritative, void, and of no force." End quote. So James Madison in Federalist Paper number 46, ba ba ba! Uh, wrote the Constitution, the Constitution preserves the advantage of being armed, which the Americans possess over the people of almost every other country. Or every other nation, he puts it, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, where the governments are afraid to trust the people with arms. So, there's pretty much not another free country in the United States um, that allows the citizens to have the fire firepower that we have. And I'm going to read something here in the Federalist Papers here, why James Madison uh, wrote that and why citizens having firepower is uh, important. Uh, let's see. Uh, Je Thomas Jefferson wrote, What country can preserve its liberties if its rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. So... You know, to many Americans, this is the last sentence here, to many Americans, um, belief in the Second Amendment grants Americans the right to own firearms only to go hunting and for self-protection. The framers of the Constitution had no such intent in mind. So, it's a pretty good little article. Grab it, put it in your stack of stuff. And, uh, you know, Educate yourself a little bit. Educate your friends and share this video. I don't. I'm not digging for subscriptions or anything like that. Um, I just. I love all eight of you guys, and I really want to keep it that way. But the info that's here, um, you 
you've got to stand up with Virginia. We have to start standing up for this. And I think what's awesome to see the amount of scuttlebutt, rumor, uh, conversation, everybody's talking about it. You know, you have Limbaugh, you have Hannity, I have my morning guy um, here in Arizona and Phoenix, um, and a bunch of other radio personalities and TV personnel, or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, TV personalities. A lot of people are talking about this. Not to mention a lot of the people on YouTube are talking about it. Everybody's got an opinion on this thing. Um, I'm going to maybe surprise you a little bit. And I want to say, and this is, this is huge for me. Um, some people out there, I know there's some people out there and I'm, I'm as frustrated as you are. I'm, I'm, we are at a point where we've been pushed around too much. Um, some of the conservatives in Congress are starting to get a spine. The testee is starting to drop on a few of them, but no way near the, the support we need. Um, you know, our government is still an establishment government. They are still um, the swamp. And it's going to take a little bit more time for uh, Trump to get that out of there, but he's working on it for sure. But there's a lot of dudes that are itching for a revolution, a, a new um, civil war. Uh, that's anybody that's been in the military. And again, I was in the Marine Corps, but I was never in combat. But I trained for it. You know, I saw what what had to be done and how how much it sucked to be out in the field. Um, but anybody that's been in combat is is going to tell you right flat out. Um, that's the last thing you want. Absolutely last thing you want. If the, if America goes into a civil war, uh, it's going to be years, if not decades, before um, we get back to uh, normal. And that may not even happen at all, quite honestly. Um, it just may not even happen at all. So, you have to chill... And here's, here's what's going to happen. I, I can tell you right now, because of that scuttlebutt about Virginia increasing the uh, Corrections Department budget, um, I, I'm, I'm going to say that they probably are, they're going to pass it. You know, they're going to pass the stupid-ass laws. Unless you guys call and just overwhelm them. You know, you got to overwhelm them and maybe they'll, they'll see it differently, but I doubt it. Um, it's going to go... And get challenged immediately. You know, the minute they pass it, it's going to get challenged. Um, I want to see this, and we have to see this, go up to the Supreme Court. It, it just absolutely has to go all the way up to the Supreme Court. And we'll get a stay. Uh, Trump has really got some great judges going on, some great federal judges now. And, uh, you know, we have pretty much the majority in the uh, Supreme Court. Um, I don't see... Um, Ginsburg lasting too much longer. That chick is like the walking dead. She's worse than Nancy Pelosi. You know, these vampires are out there. They're like they're immortal or something. Um, but I don't see her uh, lasting too much longer. So anyway, um, on the 20th, all right, Virginia Citizens Defense League is going to have a rally. If you could send them a couple bucks, please do. Um, I've got the flyer. Um, well, it's up right now. Um, and look on the bottom there, Governor Northam's office. There's his phone number. Um, on the 20th, if they're out there doing this, blow up the switchboard. Um, I believe they're going to be about two hours behind us. So they're supposed to be there from... Uh, starts jumping something. The Pocahontas building. What? Attend lobby day to help stop these bills. Lobby event starts inside the General Assembly building. Pocahontas Building 900. Hey, Elizabeth Warren has a building named after her. <laughs> um, that's going to start at 8 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And then the lobby day rally is going to start um, at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's going to be fairly short, but um, at 8, 8 a.m., that's like 6 o'clock our time. Um, I'm not at work yet. No, I'll be blowing up their phones. And you'll see up here in the corner, where, you know, AR-15, banned. Glock 17, banned. Mossberg, 930 SPX. What? Banned, because it's got a pistol grip on it. Um, 
Now, I didn't see much in here as far as the M4 carbine, but I'm going to assume that, yeah, it's banned because it's got a tr uh, telescoping stock, it's got two hand grips on it, it's got a flash suppressor. I mean, it totally goes, it bucks everything that they're saying. It's got 30 round clip or magazine, 30 round mag. <laughs> I've been hearing dummies all day long say clips and it's like, oh shit, it's rubbing off. The stupidity. Um, okay, so down below in the description box, um, I've got this, uh, his phone number, his email address, and his office address. Uh, for some of you old schoolers that, uh, you know, you like to write letters, please do. All right. Um, also, there's the Senate. Um, you can blow up their phones too. Unfortunately, they don't have like a, a, a single switchboard. Um, everybody's got their own individual numbers. So if you could pick a Democrat or two out of here, it doesn't matter who they are, just pick pick one or two and call them and tell them that you're not happy and that you're violating the Constitution and we're not going to stand for it. Um, and get, don't, you know, I mean, don't get nasty, but just let them know the facts. We're not giving up our weapons. It's unconstitutional and you have no right to do this. We'll see you in court. Okay. Um, a couple other things. Let's go in. I want to just say a couple of things about this. Walter E. Williams thing. Um, there's another link for um, down below for this article here. It's basically just a lot of quotes um, from the Founding Fathers. And uh, it was written by, uh, well, it's published by Brian, or Brian Thomas put it together uh, for the uh, U.S. News and World Report. Um, there's a lot going on about the Second Amendment. Some on the left have been spreading a little rumor that it isn't necessarily about protecting any right of the individual. Some say it doesn't hold water compared to the government's ideas on ensuring public safety. Yeah, if they wanted to ensure public safety, they'd get rid of it and ban criminals first. Uh, let's not forget that the amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, isn't our only clue to determine what the founders thought of the right to bear arms. They left behind plenty of writings which outline the purpose of the Second Amendment. And uh, down below is a uh, um, the website for um, the Federalist Papers. It's a little tricky to read because the language is a little bit... It's the Queen's English. Um, so it's, it's a little bit tricky, but um, it, it's fascinating reading. I, I suggest if you haven't read the Federalist Papers, that you get it and uh, read it. Maybe print out a binder full. Um, of all the um, papers that are there so that you can go and cross-reference what the founders thought about these things that they were doing to the Constitution in the country. So, I got a couple here that I highlighted. I'm not going to read all of these things. I just want to read a couple that I think are pertinent to what we got going on here. Uh, this one is by... Uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson, he's quoting the 18th century criminologist Cesar uh, Bacara, Bacara, Bacaria. It's Bacaria, B-A-C-C-A-R-I. I, I got to assume that's an S pronunciation. Um, and he says, uh, the laws that forbid the carrying of arms are laws of such a nature. They disarm only those who are neither inclined nor determined to commit crimes. We've been saying that forever. Such laws make things worse for the assaulted and better for the assailants. They serve rather to encourage than to prevent homicides, for an unarmed man may be attacked with greater confidence than an armed man. Hmm. Here's another one. Uh, who is this one? Pennsylvania governor. Okay, this is uh, uh, George Mason referencing advice given to the British Parliament by Pennsylvania Governor Sir William Keith. The debates in the several state conventions on the adoption of the federal constitution. This was June 14, 1788. To disarm the people is the most effectual way to enslave them. Before a standing army can rule, this is from um, Papa Noah Webster, the guy who invented the dictionary. Uh, before a standing army can rule, the people must be disarmed, as they are not in almost every country, or as they are in almost every country in Europe. The supreme power in America cannot enforce unjust laws by the sword, because the whole body of the people are armed, and const con constitute. 
And, oh, and constitute <laughs> a force superior to any band or re of regular troops. That's in the Federalist paper here. I was going to read that, but I, I'm getting kind of long on this, so we probably will shine it on. But read the re Federalist number 46, and I've got one more thing after this. Um, necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedom. It is the argument of tyrants. It is the creed of slaves. William Pitt. Mm. I like this one here. The supposed quietude of a good man allures the ruffian, while on the other hand, arms, like the law, discourage and keep the invader and the plunderer in awe, and preserve order in the world as well as property. The balance of power is the scale of peace. The same balance would be preserved were all the world destitute of arms, for all would be alike. But since some will not, others dare not lay them aside. And while a single nation refuses to lay them down, it is proper that all should keep them up. Horrid mischief would ensue were one half of the world deprived of the use of them. For while adverse, adverse and ambition have no place in the heart of men, the weak will become a prey to the strong. The history of every age and nation establishes these truths and facts need but little arguments when they prove themselves. Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. So, awesome stuff there. Basically, the Founding Fathers knew, uh, you know, governments from time to time need to be reminded that the people will not tolerate their bullshit. Um, armed conflict? I don't want it. I don't want it. Um, I have no beef with Arizona right now. I certainly wouldn't take up arms against my state. Um, I just don't know, you know, where would we go? You know, what, try to hitch a ride to, you know, get up to uh, Washington, D.C. and fight and get up to Virginia. Um, I suppose, you know, see which way, you know, what's going on and who's doing what. But well, that's the last thing we want, guys, you know. Anybody that tells you that they want to have a civil war, um, probably full of shit and has probably never been in combat, probably never been in the military, and has no concept of what it's like um, to uh, suffer a war like that, especially a civil war. Uh, okay, one last thing. Um, I got in, in here, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, I told you guys about the uh, number 16. Uh, Senate Bill Number Sixteen um, from Virginia. This defines. I felt you got kind of somebody nailed me about not being able to really define uh, uh, assault rifle much. Um, assault firearm means well. Let, let's do this. Um, it, it almost pretty much mirrors the uh, Senate Bill Sixty Six. It's in the United States Senate. Okay. Right here, in the United States Senate. It's down below. I got a link there. Get it. Print it out. Um, and I only printed out a couple of pages because this is where it's going to uh, define <coughs> assault weapon. And Miss Feinstein, of course, is the sponsor of this thing with all their usual clowns. Um, Schumer, Durbin, Reed, Car Carter, Carper, uh, who else? Oh, Bernie, Sanders. Elizabeth Warren, Hirono, you know, all these dicks sponsoring this bill. Uh, be it enacted in the Senate, House of Representatives, the United States, American Congress Assembled, section in the short title, this act may be cited as the Assault Weapons Ban of, of 2019. Definitions. In general, section 921A of Title 18 is amended. By inserting after paragraph four, the term semi-automatic pistol means any repeating pistol that A, utilizes a portion of the energy for firing cartridge to extract the fired cartridge case and chamber the next round, and B, requires a separate pull of the trigger to fire each cartridge. The term semi-automatic shotgun means repeating shotgun that utilizes a portion of by adding the end of the following, the term semi-automatic assault weapon mean any of the following regardless of country 
of manufacturer or caliber of ammunition accepted. A. Semi-automatic uh, uh, semi rifle that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine in any one of the following. So basically, because you can put a magazine in it, you're done. It doesn't even say 10 rounds, 15 rounds. It's just, it's just got a detachable magazine. If it has a detachable magazine, it's an assault rifle. Um, so semi-automatic rifle that has a, the capacity to accept detachable magazines and any one of the following. A pistol grip, a forward grip, a folding telescoping or detachable stock or is otherwise foldable or adjustable in a manner that operates to reduce the length, size, or any other dimensions, or otherwise enhances the concealability of the weapon. Uh, can't have a grenade launcher, can't have a barrel shroud, uh, and it cannot have a, a threaded barrel. Um, I think in California they make you weld them on uh, if you have a, uh, you know, like a birdcage or some kind of flash hider. No, they make you weld those things on there. But, uh, yeah, you're not gonna. You're no longer in the federal laws. You're never no longer gonna be able to have a threaded barrel. Uh, B, a semi-automatic rifle that has a fixed magazine with the capacity to accept more than ten rounds, except for an attached tubular device designed to accept the capable or incapable of operating only with 22 caliber ammunition. So, you know, if you have a tube magazine on your rifle, it better be under ten rounds. Any part, combination of parts, component, device, attachment, or, or accessory that is designed or functions to accelerate the rate of fire of a semi-automatic rifle, but not to convert the semi-automatic rifle into a machine gun. Any part, combination of parts, component, device, attachment, or accessory. So is this an accessory or a component or a combination thereof? Because there's quite a few little things. Because when I can bump fire this and look at this clip, <laughs> this is bump fire, and I just used my finger to do it. <sighs> uh, Semi-automatic pistols are not exempt from any of this. Uh, it has to have a detachable magazine and any one. A semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine. And come on, every freaking one out there except a, a wheel gun. <sighs> and any one of the following. A threaded barrel. A second pistol grip, a barrel shroud, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some location outside of the pistol grip, semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm, a manufactured weight of 50 ounces or more when unloaded. Okay, so basically all you guys with AR-15 pistols, kiss them goodbye, they're gone. Uh, Semi-automatic shotgun, folding, telescoping, detachable pistol grip, uh, folding stock, pistol grip, fixed magazine with capacity to accept more than five rounds. I have eight, uh, uh, seven plus one. There goes my SPX. Dudes, they want to disarm us. I mean, there's nothing, you know, that's it. They want to disarm us. That's not going to happen. But here's what I think should happen. Right? This is my last little bit here. My last little part of the rant. It's got to go through the court system. We have to. That is like our last resort. I'm glad to see people fired up over this. I'm, I'm totally glad to see people fired up. This is awesome to see people pissed off. The, the population pissed off is really scary for government. It needs to be. So, wow, look at all that stuff. <laughs> Just for two, you know, two videos. But you know, I'm really glad to see this getting people's dander up. Uh, but the thing of it is, guys, look, we have to be a little patient. Um, what's gonna happen is that, um, first off, Trump's never gonna sign that while he's in office. He's never gonna sign anything like that. And yes, I was a little upset over the fact that he's uh, kind of supporting the uh, the red uh, flag laws and due process be damned. I'm, I'm not digging that, but he's a negotiator, guys. A lot of times he's going to say some things to get people, you know, the, the, the train moving in the direction that he wants to set it. Um, I wasn't cool about that, but until he pulls the trigger and actually does something like that, 
uh, let's not just go crazy and, and abandon him, okay? There's going to be a few things that he's not perfect on, something you might not like. But overall, in general, this president has probably been the best president we've ever seen. Uh, I love Ronald Reagan, but this guy is probably the best president that we've ever seen in our lifetime. And it's just kind of sad because we'll only have five years left. I mean, we got next year and then the election and then four more years. Uh, who's going to take over after that? Who's going to have the balls that, that Trump has? Okay, We don't want a politician back in there. We want all of these people gone. You know, the Feinsteins, the John McCain's, rest his soul, whatever. Um, you know, the Mitt Romney's of the world. Nancy Pelosi's, you know, all these career politicians that think they know better than you do how to run your life. We want government to just leave us alone, get the hell out of our way, and don't bug me. Don't tread on me, is what I'm thinking. So, all right, well, there you have it. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, um, take a look at some of the notes down below, the links, click on them, get your info. Um, share this, if you can, um, with other people, and it, Try to get them to share it. You know, if you share it with two people and they share it with each guy, two people, um, you know, within a couple of weeks, we'll have a shit ton of people um, helping to support this cause. Also, um, you know, if, if other people on the Internet are doing the same thing, uh, you know, there's just going to be a whole bunch of uh, nonsense going on on the 20th. Uh, it's going to be a good day. I can't wait to see what happens on January 20th. So, and that'll be like a, a few days or a week before they're uh, voting on these laws. So we'll see if we have an effect on that. I hope we do. Um, if not, let's get it going through the courts. Uh, let's let it do its thing. <clears throat> and then after that point, we'll have to see what we're going to do. But, you know, I'm not giving up anything. That's, I'm just telling you right now, I'm not giving up anything. Oh, it's going to suck because I'm going to probably lose that battle, but it's just the way it is. You know, I'm not going to just lay my weapons down because I hope none of you guys do either. Anyway, um, love you guys. Have a good New Year. I don't know if I'll post anything before New Year's. Um, it's Sunday right now and uh, we'll see. Um, but in the meantime, uh, be safe out there and uh, keep your powder dry and uh, can stock up. I uh, just saw a, I uh, got a uh, electronic uh, flyer in my email from uh, Target Sports USA, Federal, Lake City Ammo, uh, 55 grain brass um, for it was, I think, 28? 28 cents around? 27 cents around? Free shipping? Yes, yeah, sir. We're in some good times right now, so enjoy it. Go out, go shooting. And uh, that's actually the case I'm gonna uh, not this weekend you know not New Year's weekend but the weekend after um, it's real close to my birthday so I'm gonna be uh, trying to get out with knee knocker now that my hip and everything is working good my back is halfway straight and feeling really good so we'll see about getting out there and uh, doing a little more shooting and uh, getting the final zero in on all these uh, rifles and stuff so all right peace I'm out <laughs>